Hey everybody, it's Ryan Metzler here again, and today we are going to take a look at another Essen release. Uh, this is Abyss. Now, a, Abyss is a game from Bombix and Asmodee, uh, and just, just look at the cover art on this game. It's beautiful. Actually, it might have come out at Gen Con now that I think about it. I don't think it was an Essen release. I've just had it for far too long and haven't been reviewing. So, Gen Con released with just this beautiful artwork, uh, and they had all types of different box covers with different faces on them, and I think there were people even collecting them. But uh, the game is beautiful on the cover, the game is beautiful uh, on the board, everything is wonderfully produced. Uh, and the game inside is a game about trying to collect different sets of cards, use those cards in order to purchase lords, and then use those lords in order to purchase locations in order to score victory points. Uh, so real quick, why don't we take a look at what you get inside of this box, we'll see how the game plays, and then we'll come back here at the end and get my opinions on Abyss. So here you can see the components for Abyss all set up. First thing to comment on is the artwork in this game is beautiful, and when I saw it, for some reason I thought it would be a much heavier game than it is. No idea why, just based on the artwork. Uh, now the game in general is a pretty lightweight game. Uh, the idea is that you're going to be accumulating allies from this deck of cards uh, in order to buy or recruit lords from this area down here, uh, and you're going to get those lords in order to try and get these key symbols and the abilities on the lords as well as the fact that they're worth points in order to get areas. And these areas will essentially be bonus ways of earning points at the end of the game based on what you've acquired throughout the game. So, uh, basically on your turn, the first thing you always have the chance of doing is as the game goes on, some of these lords will be purchased and everything will slide down. The first thing you can do on each of your turns is, if you want, you can pay pearls, that's these little goods that you have here, and you start with one, in order to add a lord to the end of the line, simply giving you more options to buy from or potentially uh, delaying the ability of somebody else to get a bonus if they are looking to get a bonus. Uh, now, if you decide to do that, you can pay as many pearls as you want in order to fill up as many spaces as you want one at a time. After you've done that, you must take an action on your turn, and there are three different types of actions. The first is called Exploring the Depths, and that's going to use this deck of ally cards right here. Essentially, the active player is going to flip over the top card of the deck, and they're going to say, okay, it's a five of shells to five of shells ally, uh, and they're going to place it in this spot right here. From here, around the table, they're going to offer this card to everyone else one at a time. So the first player next to them has the choice of buying this card. If they want to buy it, it's going to cost one pearl, paid to the player who's offering it. And the five of shells is pretty good, so maybe they want to buy it and they decide to pay one pearl to this player, and they take this card into their hand. Then this player will flip another card, and they're going to offer it around the table. Now this player's already bought a card, plus they're out of pearls, so they can't buy anything else but it would go to the next player around the table, let's say this player here, and they have the option of buying this card. However, since one card's already been bought, it now costs two pearls in order to buy a card. So they can't buy it, they only have one pearl. And that's true of everyone except for the player who actually offered the card. So when it comes back to our player, they have the choice. Do I want to take this card, which is the one of jellyfish, uh, the lowest card in jellyfish, or do I want to pass? and they would likely pass, because there are lots of ones, not as many twos, less threes, even fewer fours, and only one five of each suit in this deck, and there are five different suits. So then they would flip another card, they see it's the two of octopi, and they would flip it around the table again, offering it to everyone, but it still costs two, and since a two's not that good, they continue going. And now they see that the two of jellyfish is here. Maybe they decide to pass again. The two of shells comes up, and they're not too intrigued, and they flip one more card, and it's the five of crabs. So, they actually got lucky. This is the last card. Anybody still has the chance to buy it if they have the pearls, which nobody does, but he is now forced to take this card, our first player, because it's the last card. Just so happens that it's the best possible card in the suit. In addition, since he got all the way to the end before taking anything, he gets a free pearl, which he would take from the supply and add to his shell. So, he got a good card, and he gets to get a pearl. All of the other cards that were left over are going to get stacked into their appropriate piles and placed in the council right below, face down. So they get added to these stacks right here. Uh, if there were already any cards there, they would be added to those cards. So this one is shells and goes here, and this one is squid and goes there. Uh, and essentially, these are cards that are available to be taken as a different type of action. So instead of exploring the depths, our next player could decide, well, I liked what I saw in Jellyfish, I'm just going to take that entire pile, and that's my whole turn. No offering anything to anybody else, no flipping cards, nothing else. So, that is a potential action you can take, just take all the cards. 
The third action you can take is buying these lords from the bottom, and you'll see that the lords have costs, they have victory point values, they have keys on them, uh, and they have affiliations. So, let's take a little bit closer look at a lord. These lord cards are all affiliated with one different faction. For example, this is the soldiers faction, the crabs here. Uh, in order to buy these, you have to pay a total of six value in these cards here. Now, how do you add that up? Well, at least one of those cards must be red. That's what this little red icon means here. And at least two other colors must be used. So red and two other colors, your choice of colors, for a total value of six or greater. If you pay that, you can buy this guy and you would put him in your own tableau. Uh, he's going to give you four victory points at the end of the game. He's going to give you a key, which will allow you to buy locations later. And he's going to give you an ability, which says that when your opponent fights a monster, they earn the reward from the previous monster track space. We haven't talked about fighting monsters yet, but we'll go back to exploring the depths for that. Know that you must pay the right combination to buy one of these and place it in your area, and that is the third possible action you can take on your turn. So it's either explore the depths, request support from the council, or, rec or uh, recruit a lord. Now other lords will of course cost different things. For example, this guy costs eight, and they must all be blue, so squid. Uh, but when you recruit using, at, or after you have him, you can use any combination of colors to buy guys, uh, but you still have to discard the right number of races, uh, the, the points, in order to buy somebody. Or the shaman here says that uh, you are protected against all of the powers of the military lords. There's a guy here that costs you all different colors, all five different colors, 10 points worth, but he lets you get a location immediately. You're going to draw three locations, you're going to place one of them under your control, and you're going to make the other two available to the other players. Now he's worth three points only, but that's what these three keys mean here. Anytime you accumulate three keys, you must go get a location. You can either accumulate them from fighting monsters, more on that later, uh, and that would be these little tokens here, or you can accumulate them from buying the lords. You'll see the little keys in the upper uh, left hand, nope, right hand corner. Uh, this one comes with three keys, which means you must immediately get a location, and you would get it by drawing three of these. Now when you look at these, they all give you some type of different bonus. This one says that it's worth three points for each of your lords with one or more keys on it. So not bad if you accumulate a lot of lords with keys on them. Of course, they don't all have keys. This one right here says it's worth 20 minus the number of affiliated allies you have. So you wanna have fewer allies and we'll talk about affiliation in just a little bit. Or we have this one right here. You may immediately switch the lo this location with the location of your choice from the deck. So you can go get whatever location you want. So, you're going to pay your allies out of your hand to recruit your lord. When you do so, you're going to take the lowest ally you play. Let's say, for example, I had played a five and a four in order to buy, uh, actually, I'll need one more card, another card. So let's say we had played a five, a five, and a four, uh, way overpaid, uh, in order to buy this six cost guy right here. Um, actually, I can't. We'll buy this six cost guy because at least one of the cards must be red. So I'm paying five, five, and four, 14 to buy a six cost guy. Yes, way overpaying, I know. But the bonus to doing this is that I get to keep the lowest valued card for myself. In this case, it's this four of shells. And that becomes an affiliated ally, which can theoretically score me points at the end of the game. I would set that aside, discard the other two, and take my lord, placing him in my area. So that's how you recruit. This space will remain empty. If it had been this space here, these would all slide down later. Uh, and essentially that would not refill unless people paid to refill it or we reached a certain point of the game. That point of the game is when somebody manages to recruit the Lord all the way down to this spot here. You'll see it's worth two pearls if they do so. So one, two, three, four Lords have to be recruited out of the line with none of them having been replaced by players at the start of their turn. The player that makes this happen will get two pearls automatically and then refill the entire line, giving new lords to people to have a chance to buy. So, again, you're acquiring keys, you're going to get them, you're going to get locations. When you don't require or get all three at the same time, like from the elder here, you're going to accumulate them slowly, either by purchasing multiple lords or by fighting monsters. Again, we'll come right back to that. When you do have to purchase a location because you have three keys, typically you have the choice of using any that are out in the area already. The game starts with one, but more will be added either by guys like this that force you to make more available or by people searching for locations. So when you buy locations, you can either take a face up one or you can look at one, two, three, or four of the face down locations and choose the one you like. 
When you do this, if you look at all four, the other three will become available for other players to purchase from later in the game. Whereas if you look at only one, you're giving fewer choices to the other players. So you have to make a choice there. Now I keep saying I'm going to come back to fighting monsters. During the exploring the depths action, you don't always flip over cards that are affiliated allies. At times, you will flip over monster cards. So let me search through the deck here and find a monster card and show you exactly what those look like. So, if I were to flip over this monster card here, it has a picture of an eel on it. I have a choice at this point. I can either fight the monster immediately, which is an automatic win, and take the reward, which is either a pearl or one of these face down monster tokens, or I can pass. If I pass, I would continue flipping cards, just like normal. So I would flip over another card, see if it's a monster, it's not, and offer this around to all of the other players. But chances are I could flip another monster. If I skip the first monster, I'll move the token up and the reward gets better. But now I don't have the option of taking that reward until another monster is flipped. If another monster is flipped, I can take two pearls or a pearl and a monster token or two monster tokens, or I can pass. And again, the marker will go up and the reward gets better. So essentially you're pressing your luck to see how many monsters you can draw in one five card or potentially more if other players buy cards streak all the way up to potentially getting two keys just for flipping cards uh, and being very lucky. So you get to choose how many times you'll pass, but if you pass a lot of times, you can get two keys. Now this doesn't reset when your turn is over, it stays there. So the next player to flip monsters will get better and better rewards and have to make the decision whether they want to get cards or whether they want to take the monster reward. Regardless, your turn will either end when you fight the monster or when you take a card. Now you're going to play on in this manner, basically taking one of the three actions, trying to accumulate these keys in order to spend the keys uh, by buying different locations. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is the keys, if their tokens go away, or if their lords get slid underneath the location so that you no longer get their ability, so the abilities go away. But regardless, you're going to keep doing this until somebody either buys seven lords, their seventh lord, or somebody uh, makes it so that the deck can no longer be refilled to fill the entire lord area if it has to be filled by vacating this spot. In that case, everyone else will get one more turn and then the game will end. At the end of the game, you're going to get points for many different things. The first will be the value of all of your lords, of course. The second will be the bonus points that you calculate from all of the different locations you control. So locations will say what they're worth and will give you bonuses based on either different guys you have or different affiliated allies or perhaps even pearls. There's a lot of different choices. Uh, of course, on top of that, you're going to get points for any monster tokens that you got throughout the game. So when you take these tokens, you'll see they have a value printed on them, for example, three. Those will be points at the end of the game. And then finally, you're going to get points for your affiliated allies. Now, let's say I have this affiliated ally, uh, and I also have this affiliated ally. Unfortunately, they are the same color. So I'm going to get points for only one of them. Now the points I will get will be for the highest one that I have. So I'm not going to get six, but I am going to get four, and that's for each of the different colors that I have affiliated allies in. So if I were to have a four in all five, I would get 20 bonus points to add to my total. And whoever has the most points at the end of the game by getting lords, getting good at locations, killing monsters, and of course collecting good allies will be the winner. Well, there you have it. That is Abyss. Now, uh, as I said during the uh, the review, I thought this was going to be heavier for some odd reason, and it's not a heavy game at all. It's a very light game. Uh, the main mechanism of the game, uh, that flipping over the cards, the searching underwater or whatever it's called, exploring the depths, uh, is basically a push your luck aspect. You're flipping a card. You have to offer that card to everyone else or fight it if it's a monster. Uh, and if nobody else buys it, you can take it or you can flip another card. And so basically there's a press your luck mechanism there. Going from there, the game branches out a little bit more. So you have the options of, you know, accumulating a lot of cards or spending them to buy lords. When you're buying lords uh, and kind of pursuing the keys, uh, you have the option of either using your lords to get keys or fighting monsters to get keys and how you want to spend those. And of course, keeping lords on your tableau is better because they give you abilities. So. The choices seem a little bit obvious to me. The game is not bad, it's light. Uh, it's a little bit lighter than what I would prefer, but for a very light, short game, I enjoy it. I had a lot of fun playing it. It is, of course, beautiful. Uh, for a press your luck game, I think it has more choices than a lot of press your luck games do. And so overall, I think it's, it's fine. Uh, it's probably not one that I'll be keeping for very long. Uh, I love the art. I, I, I think the idea is good. Uh, it's just not for me. So if it sounds good, please do check it out. It's not one that I'm going to avoid or tell you, you, tell you to avoid, but uh, not one that's personally for me. So if that sounds good, check it out. That's Abyss. 
Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.